Special funding for the operation of this channel is provided by the City of Oceanside. The content of the program and opinions expressed in PEG Access programs are the sole responsibility of the program producers. Welcome to this edition of Faith and the Common Good, brought to you by North Coast United Methodist Church, of which I serve as pastor, and for this table also serve as your host. Faith and the Common Good brings us an opportunity to discuss issues in our community that speak to us all and help us to look at ways that we can all be supportive in resolving or continuing to work on together that which will help all of our community to be the best that it can possibly be. Today we will be in discussion about the issue of holiday depression or that time of the year that brings about a great deal of stress, that brings about a great deal of expectation and both the stress and the expectation cause us then to move into places of uh, depression. We are pleased to have our guests today who deal with specialized populations in our city of Oceanside and in the surrounding area and they will offer to us expertise and response to questions about how to support, how to recognize what the concerns may be as it relates to uh, depression. We welcome first Phyllis Strait, who is the owner president of Bright Star Care which is an in-home and uh, health care agency that addresses the concerns of both children and seniors in our community. Welcome, Phyllis. Thank you. We're so glad that you uh, have been able to take the time away from your busy schedule to come and join us at the table. And uh, we thank you for your willingness to share uh, your perspective based upon your experience, especially with our seniors who are older. Um, and today, particularly, we're talking about those matters that relate to holiday stress. Yes, it's my pleasure. Thank well, you. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Firstly, would you tell us uh, what you do and uh, whom you serve? We provide uh, respite care and then also home health care uh, to people that um, oh, either are lonely and need someone to be with them. Uh, maybe they have problems um, with their ADLs, activities of daily living, and they need support in that area. Sometimes our clients uh, may have dementia. They may be just coming out of the hospital. So it's a pretty broad range of, of clientele. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Today we want to talk specifically about our older seniors, mm -hmm. recognizing that there are two distinctive groups of seniors as the baby boomers age and begin to move into categories that are named senior by mm -hmm. our society, although still quite vital they are. <laughs> at 55 plus. Um, but we want to talk about um, the concerns of those who are slightly older. So if mm -hmm. you could identify that age range and then begin to talk about some of the um, the observations that you have okay. about that age range. Okay, um, it's really interesting. Most of the clients that are uh, 85 to, I guess our oldest client is 106, uh, really didn't expect to live this long, first of all. And um, as, our, as our culture gets very uh, fast and um, as the baby boomers coming up um, are very involved in community and very involved in all the things that they do. I think the older generation is really feeling a bit isolated many times. Um, there are seniors that stay pretty active, but as, um, as our older generation um, moves along, they um, are, can't be as active physically. And, uh, and they seem, I think, more and more um, separated or, um, you know, from, from the younger seniors even, yeah. And what are you finding to be um, trends among um, this demographic, the 80s and olders, as it relates to relationship, as it relates to social connection, and anything that would speak of their vitality? Well, I think many times they just feel very isolated. And as they physically can't do as much, 
um, that makes a difference also. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, uh, one of the biggest observations I've made since being in the industry is that as the senior slows down, um, they become less and less able to get out, less and a less able to do things. Mm -hmm. and then I think also psychologically, because there's such a gap between uh, what the 40, 30 and 40 year olds are doing and, and then the younger seniors, that they feel very isolated, um, just in not understanding cell phones. And, mm -hmm. and, and there, there's a lot to um, um, watching that change and also being a bit fearful of it, sure. you know, not understanding it, uh, not understanding computers often. Sure. And as they become more and more isolated, I think that's when there really is the opportunity for them to be depressed. Um, one of the things that we try to do is, as caregivers is to spend time doing the things that they used to do, yeah. uh, taking them to the beach maybe, or taking them shopping, or to movies, the things that they haven't been able to do in a while. Mm -hmm. And it sort of opens them up and, and gets them out and, and moving again. And, sure. and I think for families, um, it's important to remember that uh, because of the isolation aspect, the, maybe the best thing they can do is just spend time. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those um, rare commodities sure. <laughs> for each and every one of us as we get busier you know, to really just sit and take time. Sure. And, and that's very important to them. And certainly for um, holiday considerations uh, mm -hmm. from Thanksgiving and forward to the uh, New Year's Eve celebrations, uh, family and friends and relationships are uh, the focus and, and somewhat the magnets of those experiences. And for persons who have been isolated from family, uh, who have uh, changed physically, who have changed cognitively, who have changed in ways that they relate to the world. What suggestions do you have other than, you know, spending the time? Mm -hmm. What would you say to a family person, perhaps, who has not seen a parent or a loved one during the course of the entire year and, you know, comes to face the changes? I'm surprised sometimes at uh, how families tend to talk about uh, their parents like they weren't in the room. Uh, they become a topic of conversation, you know, did you notice that mom wasn't as quick or, or lost her way or, or whatever. And, and when the whole family comes together, that's really the opportunity for, uh, for the children mm -hmm. to make decisions and make observations. But that's also a very scary time for the senior because they're losing control of their life. They're losing control maybe of um, their memory or lots of other things. And so it's a scary time for them. Mm -hmm. And so in addition to all the stress that comes with the holidays normally, there's additional stress on that. Um, I think that if, um, if the children can remember that the parents were always the parents and to just give them the respect and honor due of, of their parents. Sure. And, you know, remember that. Sure. I, I serve uh, seniors or older adults in my congregation, 80 plus year olds, mm -hmm. uh, nearing 100. And quite often the statement is, I would like to run my own business or I would like to do the things that I uh, can do for myself mm -hmm. still, which then adds to that level of stress, that level of uh, consideration that leads then perhaps toward depression when when people realize that their capabilities are literally being uh, swept away from them even when there is still an opportunity mm -hmm. for them to you know press you know press forward and take care of themselves so it's really important to remind the children of older adults that they are the children and in spite of their desire and hope and love and care for their parents, mm -hmm. uh, still to um, engage their parents in ways that will enable them to remain mm -hmm. vital. Well, and there is a role change that's taking place, but at the same time, I think that they, that the seniors lose sight of the value that they have in the stories, mm -hmm. the things that the children haven't heard yet, mm -hmm. um, the opportunity still to teach mm -hmm. or still to be vital in the community mm -hmm. and in the family. Sure. And um, again, that takes cooperation and time between 
um, the parents and the children and the grandchildren and sometimes the great-grandchildren. Sure. You have a professional staff of about 85 or so persons. Mm -hmm. What training do you provide for your staff, which would then give us a clue as to what can be done uh, in working with our older adults? What kind of training do you offer? For well, um, aside from the, the training of transferring clients and bathing and all those things, the, the ADLs, the activities of daily living, uh, one of the things we've been surprised about is the misunderstanding of young people as to why our 80 and 90 year olds um, don't like to see paper towels wasted. Mm -hmm. The difference between the culture mm -hmm. of young people, those of us that have been consumers all these years, mm -hmm. and a generation that saw very hard times mm -hmm. and who are very frugal and pay attention mm -hmm. to the pennies and the details. Sure. There, uh, There's a huge cultural change. So when it, one of the things we do is just to make sure that they understand who our seniors are. And um, that's a good thing, I think, for families to do also, is to sit down and talk about the old times and talk about the things that their parents used to do with them. I don't think children really understand that there ever was a time mm -hmm. when there wasn't TV, mm -hmm. when there wasn't the kinds of entertainment that they're accustomed to, mm -hmm. that there were times when we just sat and talked about mm -hmm. Um, our day or, or told stories of the family and share some of that, yeah. You have a very um, vivid passion for those who um, have considered themselves worthy of, of being paid attention to, and certainly we consider them worthy of being paid attention mm -hmm. to as well. How is it that you came to have such a, a gerontological understanding, firstly, and then secondly, such a passion for older persons? I'm not sure I know. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've worked with children a lot, and then um, uh, one day I was um, looking for a company to help my children get started in, and I found Bright Star. And I think over the years I'd made some observations. My husband had um, an aunt that had a stroke, mm -hmm. And um, as I watched her, she lived halfway across the country, and as I watched her lose um, the use of her leg and her arm, just mostly because she couldn't motivate herself to do the exercises. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought, there must be, there must be someone that could come and help. Mm -hmm. And of course, sometimes the churches are able to do that, and that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, but I didn't know that there was a service where you could hire someone to someone to come two or three hours mm -hmm. a day, mm -hmm. two or three days a week, mm -hmm. and really make a difference by getting the senior out and getting them exercised. Mm -hmm. um, then also, our um, uh, we have a, a great uncle um, that died of Alzheimer's, and we watched the degeneration there. And, and just the observation of the needs, um, it, it's an opportunity to really make a difference in, mm -hmm. in, the, in your family sure. and in the community around you. Sure. you now, there will be plenty of opportunities in the future. Certainly yeah. so, certainly so. Um, you um, offer uh, support to the individual, you offer support to the family, mm -hmm. and especially considering the needs of holiday, um, that support becomes another anchor or another cushion that diverts uh, both family or child or parent from uh, those places of depression. Um, what you're then advocating is the notion of relationship. Absolutely. But it's all about relationships. Mm -hmm. It's all about touching and holding hands and speaking kindly and in, in love and asking questions. Mm -hmm. Because even, even those seniors that have, are losing their memory and have forgotten many things, they still have uh, value and have thoughts and um, and they will reflect the love and the kindness that you show them mm -hmm. uh, no matter what where they are mm -hmm. whether they have totally lost their memory or not they will be a reflection of who you are in their lives mm -hmm. yeah well Phyllis I want to thank you for again taking time to come and and offer these insights and supports to uh, those who attempt to support others in uh, places of depression and especially as we look at this holiday season uh, we want to be the best that we can be and offer the best that we can uh, to those who are considered most vulnerable in our society so thank you for your passion and for your work and uh, we look forward Forward to further conversation with okay, you. Okay, thank you so much for the opportunity. Okay, certainly. And thank you. We will return in just a few moments.
Welcome back to Faith and the Common Good. I am your host, Pastor Harris. We have been discussing uh, concerns about holiday depression and all of those uh, indicators that come along with the season that would remind us there, that there are those who are less than comfortable with the holidays. We are uh, pleased to welcome to the table Karen Orell, who is the co-vice president of the North Coastal San Diego County uh, Alliance of NAMI. And we will be glad to speak with her about her expertise and her observations of life uh, for all age levels and what she offers as suggestions for ways for those of us who support and serve as well as those of us who are around family or uh, persons in the community, how we can recognize um, and support issues that relate to depression. Welcome, Karen. Thank you so much for having me on the oh, show. Oh, certainly. It's We're so happy that you are you. here today. Thank you for coming. Um, we want to talk firstly about NAMI and uh, your work with NAMI. If you could tell us what NAMI does and um, their extensive network of support agencies within our area. Well, NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and what that is is it's a it's a North American continent. Basically, it's in Canada, U.S., and Mexico, mm -hmm. mainly in the U.S. Though, and it's an organization that's focused on education and advocacy for those who have mental health challenges mm -hmm. and their families. Mm -hmm. So creating support around that. There are a, a multitude of uh, free programs offered. All of the people that work with NAMI are volunteers mm -hmm. uh, at the affiliate level. And we have classes that are free. We have general meetings that are free. Um, we have website information and support information on the website. Mm -hmm. So it's really focused on getting people information and knowledge so that they can deal with things that are going on in their daily lives. That's wonderful. Uh, speaking of information and knowledge, you are an educator of educators or a trainer of I trainers. Am. <laughs> I am. And, and so we want to, to firstly um, help our audience to understand um, the term depression. When we speak of depression, what are we speaking about? Well, depression has a wide range of um, categories. There's different types of depression, and many people use that term kind of loosely, but there is severe depression, which is like a clinical diagnosis of depression, but there's also different types of depression. Almost every person will experience some type of depression during their lifetime, mm -hmm. and one in four, according to the current statistics, mm -hmm. will have some kind of, of mm -hmm. severe Health, mental health challenge yes. or depression during your lifetime. Yes. And that's quite quite a few people. But there's seasonal depression that we're talking about today with the holidays. Um, there is different times of different people's lives, like women especially are challenged because of their hormone changes mm -hmm. with depression. Mm -hmm. So there's a multitude of different types of depression. And that makes it a little tricky when people use that word loosely. Okay. Um, so what we want to do is focus on maybe two different levels here sure. today is one that's more um, able to be dealt with in the family or the community and one where someone's really severely challenged and needs to get outside community sure. support or, sure. or possibly hospitalization. So in that same vein, we want to talk about two streams of causes, the, the general notion of causes of depression and then those stressors and other causes that affect us more particularly around um, seasonal times. Uh, so would you please then list and, and describe for us general causes? Well, um, general causes can be just stress, overload, uh, improper diet actually plays a big part in that. I want to mention that maybe a couple times today because with the seasonal things coming, there tends to be more alcohol and sugar and um, dietary things that actually are depressants in themselves. Um, but if there's, for instance, someone passes mm -hmm. in your life um, in going through grief, that's mm -hmm. definitely connected to mm -hmm. depression mm -hmm. and that can last even for years. Mm -hmm. um, there are um, different types that happen just in things that are going on in your family, like maybe financial challenges. Mm -hmm. Financial challenges could certainly cause depression or loss of a job. Mm -hmm. So those kinds of major life changes, um, for instance, divorce, um, uh, major health challenges can mm -hmm. cause depression mm -hmm. like cancer. Mm -hmm. 
So that, that kind of gives you a wide spectrum sure. of, of different sure. ones that can happen. And certainly all of those causes come to center around uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Absolutely. New Year's Eve. So would you, would you talk particularly then about um, those stressors and indicators of stress that then lead to seasonal depression? What, in your opinion, would be a primary cause uh, or even a secondary cause of depression? Well, there's been a lot of research done on this because um, originally it was thought that this is like in people's heads or um, they couldn't really figure it out. But there has been a lot of research done with the seasonal disorders and seasonal depression. And they have found that it is related to the reduced sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, we're spending more time indoors. We're not getting the, mm -hmm. the same amount of vitamins mm -hmm. and things we get from the sun. We're not having as much outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. So those things absolutely do happen. Mm -hmm. And um, there are some solutions we'll talk about a little later in the mm -hmm. show with mm -hmm. regards to that. Um, there, there are also some other things that happen with regards to the, all the additional stresses this time of year. We have family pressures, financial pressures, you know, get all the gifts, be here on time, show up with a smile. Maybe right. you're going through a lot already and then there's this expectation that you're supposed to be in your happy place right. and maybe you can't get in the happy right. place right. to be there for your family. Yes. So the, the holidays um, really do put a lot of pressure all the way from Thanksgiving to New Year's, like you're talking about, it's a, it's a whole period of time. And because it's an extended period of time, that can even add additional sure. problems. Absolutely. I think personally too, taking off the extra time, we're taking off a lot of holidays and we're, we're you know, doing that work, family, work, family, and that challenge of balancing the two. Mm -hmm. And maybe you have extra workload, but then you're trying to take off time to do the holidays with your family. Sure. So that's a bit tricky as sure. well. So it could be said that as children need structure and sometimes the absence of structure in the holiday season causes even a child to move into a less than happy place, that's also true for adults as well. When, when um, a series of uh, structured activity, whether it is work, or whether it is um, running or whatever the case may be, any change in that, especially over a prolonged period of time, would affect one's ability to relate, one's ability to um, function cognitively, one's ability to function in, in health that is of, of a, a variety that says that I am healthy mentally mm -hmm. as well. Let's talk then about the signs of depression. Absolutely. This is really important and, and we mentioned earlier about the different types of depression that there's this, this more temporary type of depression and more severe major depression. Mm -hmm. But some of the same signs actually come up for both of those. Mm -hmm. uh, major changes in sleep patterns mm -hmm. or diet or rapid weight gains, mm -hmm. rapid weight loss, um, eating excessively or not eating enough. Mm -hmm. So those kinds of things are really more obvious. But some of the things that are not as obvious is withdrawal. For mm -hmm. instance, somebody that doesn't want to leave the house in severe depression cases, people literally lock themselves in the room and they don't want to actually see anyone or go outside at all. Mm -hmm. And um, we, as, as family members, we want to look for that. You know, look for where there's major changes going on with our family member. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe they're not going to school or to work and creating excuses and reasons why, or they're saying, oh, I have a stomach ache, or I have this, or I have that, and they're using that as an excuse to withdraw from sure. the community and sure. the social situations. So you wanna watch for those. There is a genetic component that does go with um, major depression, which mm -hmm. I at least wanna mention here. Mm -hmm. And if there is a genetic predisposition to that in the family, that can contribute as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the causes, we've looked at the signs. Um, let's begin to talk about the hope. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at solutions that help us to move beyond those places of disequilibrium. Okay, well I, I actually, in my work, I, I do life coaching with people. I, I mentioned this to you earlier, but uh, one of the things I found is an exercise I have them do where they look at their life and look for the joys in their life. Mm -hmm. What is it in my lifetime that, what are those key moments, you know, those, those points that I remember that were highlights, mm -hmm. that are special, that, that really made my heart sing? 
and literally write down a list of those places where you were or those activities that you were doing where you had that joy and then work on recreating those and mm -hmm. I use that word <laughs> work <laughs> but, but it's the idea of reconnecting sure. with that joy in your life sure. doing creative skills really really helps sure. if you're doing physical activities with your hands it literally draws through the emotions out of your body and balances them like woodwork or uh, painting or any of those activities that in the creative arts mm -hmm. I, I also love doing things that are outdoors like if you could focus on not just exercise but physical activities that are joyful for mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. physical activities that you in your lifetime have found great joy and for for me one of those is dancing mm -hmm. i love dancing or horseback riding i could literally just go walk around the horses and i'd be happy at the stable so for me find, it's the library there you go the <laughs> library so every one of us has right. those special things right. mm -hmm. and sometimes we forget what those are when we when we do get depressed or we're having a lot of challenges in our life, mm -hmm. we, we lose that a little bit. You know, it, it, it sort of disappears on us. Mm -hmm. And to pull that back in and re-experience it is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then um, in light of solutions that you offer, there are some principal uh, relationships that support um, our ability to sustain mm -hmm. an equilibrium. What do you identify as those principal relationships? Well, there's some key relationships that I think are absolutely critical to all of us as humans, mm -hmm. as human beings, mm -hmm. as, as, as a social group. Mm -hmm. And one of the keys is our families. Mm -hmm. And our other speaker mentioned earlier about the critical support of families yeah. and that connection that we have with our families. Mm -hmm. And I feel so strongly about that. And, and over everything else during this holiday time, we want to connect with our families. That's way more important than any of the other activities. Mm -hmm. If you have to make a choice, do your family activities. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is uh, faith-based organizations, our spiritual support is so, so critical. Mm -hmm. We've got to have that. And for those watchers, uh, those viewers out there that are watching that, that um, don't have a community, a spiritual-based community that they're connected to, I really emphasize how important that is to search that out and to connect with it and to go regularly. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have services mm -hmm. uh, once a week usually at most, uh, most churches or mm -hmm. congregations because it's so important to have that ongoing support. And that's your secondary family. That's mm -hmm. your spiritual family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also to have a close group of good friends that you can call up and say anything, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what, they're not gonna judge you, they're gonna be there for you. Mm -hmm. Non-judgmental love and support from that, that group mm -hmm. of friends. Mm -hmm. And then very briefly, we want to look at the resources that are available as we remember that there are uh, opportunities. If one is willing to reach out, uh, there are opportunities and support networks beyond the three that you have mentioned mm -hmm. that can provide support. Can you name just one of those? Well, San Diego County has a large array. Um, the one that I, I'm always obviously affiliated with is NAMI North Coastal, mm -hmm. which is based here in Oceanside. Uh, 211 for any emergencies that people have. I mm -hmm. really suggest that if you mm -hmm. do get to that point, I know you said just mention one. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, the, there are quite an array of organizations. It takes a little digging, but 211 can refer you through. Courage to Call is also a good one for veterans. I know we're speaking out mm -hmm. to a, a community that has a large, mm -hmm. a large group of, of veterans in it. So mm -hmm. Courage to Call is great for support as well. Mm -hmm. Well, Karen, I know that we can have this conversation over the course of a year uh, because your training uh, provides that resource over the course of a year. But uh, we thank you for offering to us uh, tidbits of information and insight into how we can support one another, especially in these days of stress that relate to the holiday season. Thank you for your expertise and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. This is a season of celebration for many, but for some is, it is a season that brings sadness. So we want to keep in mind those who are in grief, those who are saddened by loss throughout the year, whatever that may be, job or otherwise, and those who find themselves either clinically or because of the seasonal activities around them in a state of depression. To you we say we want you to remember that you are not alone. 
We want to invite you to find those places of hope and strength as you seek out family, as you seek out faith community, as you seek out friends and others who are there to provide you with uh, encouragement and laughter. And so we ask that you remember again that you are not alone and encourage you to seek the resources that will be of support to you. Also remember that we live in a culture that emphasizes uh, consumerism and materialism. And because of those two pressures, we find ourselves more and more and more uh, gaining in anxiety and depression. Let us find a way to move away from that which causes us to seek out something that is not lasting. But let us move toward peace and hope and understanding, all of which will be of lasting nature. Thank you for joining us today on Faith in the Common Good, and we look forward to seeing you again. In the meantime, may God bless you with peace and joy. To order a copy of this program or any other program on KOCT, log on to KOCT.org and click Services.